because I was I was depressed all the time. Like I felt like shit being like a, a 16, 17 year old thrown into this situation, and um, it wasn't exciting. It was just like uncomfortable. I thought it was right because I had wanted to work in animation for so long, and I'd wanted to work at Spumco for so long since I was like 11 years old or 12 oh, years God. old. Oh God! And <clears throat> so I was like, "This is it. I'm here. Like I have to, like I have to make a go of it." And um, it was miserable. It was really miserable. On August 11th, 1991, Nickelodeon Hollywood, aired baby. one of its most iconic shows, Ren and Stimpy, created by John Chris Falusi, or better known as John K. It first premiered on the network as one of the original Nicktoons, accompanied by Rugrats and Doug. The show was admired by many for its use of surreal humor and disturbing imagery, and while the show continues to be celebrated by fans and Nickelodeon alike, its creator is not. Chris Falusi was never exactly seen in the best light, even in his early days in the industry. He was rude, difficult to work with, and inappropriate. But behind it all, he was a child predator. Chris Felucci Yikes. used his position as the creator of Ren Stimpy to prey upon aspiring artists and pressure them into sexual situations. Today, we look back on the events that brought to light his true nature. This is John serial Chris killer glasses, yeah. an open secret. Yeah, he, he looks like a serial killer. There are three well-known facts in the animation industry. The Simpsons will never end. A new version of Batman will come out every other year, and working with John Chris Felusi is a nightmare. This could be seen as early as 1978, when he was expelled from Sheridan College. Rugrats However, is overrated and not him, that good. He dropped out it's okay on to be own wrong. Accord because the teachers focused too much on free <clears throat> experimentation in art. During his early career, he worked for Filmation, Hanna Barbera, and Deke Entertainment leaving him with a deep-seated hatred Dick. for the style of cartoon animation, which led to the creation of Ren and Stimpy. The show became one of Nickelodeon's most successful programs, and would continue for many seasons. However, halfway through, Chris Felusi would be fired from his own show. While his relationship with Nickelodeon started off cordial, Chris Felusi would eventually push the limits of what he could get away with in terms of tone and dark humor, as well as continuously missing deadlines that were set in stone by executives. He was base? The main problem has been with production. We aren't getting new episodes, so it isn't even a content problem. We are a network. We have a big audience for this show, and we need to get episodes on the air. After his termination, he would go on to create other projects that were ultimately canceled due to its crude and inappropriate humor, such as The Ribbing Friends and Ren and Stimpy, a dull party cartoon. Oh yeah, didn't Chris they? Yeah, they tried to make an adult ego, version of it. Using his self-taught skills and refined opinions on animation to showcase that he was better than everyone else in the industry, he oh, quickly God. garnered a reputation for being an immense pain in the ass to be around. He would frequently bash other animated properties that were currently airing as well, such as when he anonymously attacked Animaniacs in a magazine article despite never actually watching the show, or when he called the American anime art style seen in Ben 10 and Avatar as gay. This was all on top of an incredibly hateful, <laughs> cynical, misogynistic nature that could be seen in the day-to-day -day work environment. What? Is he a child? Of course, Howard Stern. He looks like a tool. The secret that Chris Felusi Why did everyone go, oh, 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 underage, yeah, oh. Everyone in the room. Literally everyone in the fucking room. Like, I already don't like Howard Stern as is. It was the 90s? Did, were, were people joking about pedophilia in the 90s? Like joking about being attracted to underage people? That was, that, is that what they did in the 90s?
The secret that Chris Lucy was a child predator was an open secret in the animation industry for years. When scouting talent for Spumco Studios in the 90s, as well as in recent years for his new Florida studio, he would almost always look for young women, and never any men. He would go out of his way to show <laughs> his fellow animators photos of underage girls performing oral sex on him, asking them what they think of it, almost as if he knew what? this was wrong and was trying to get a rise out of them. Chris Felucci was known to regularly sexually harass female co-workers, and his perverted fixation on teenage girls was very evident in his art. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't. I don't want to. All right. Child pornography saved on his computer, with specific images depicting underage girls with fearful expressions, possibly taken by Chris Felucci himself. To be around with a naked girl who appeared to be around 10 years old lying on her back with her legs spread and an expression on her face, the riot is described as fearful. Oh my fucking, this is way worse than I thought. Said she too saw naked images of prepubescent girls who appeared to be between 12 and 14. The girls in these images range from wow. ages 12 to 14. Chris Felucci's attorney denied these reports, but did not go into any specifics. Chris Felucci's disturbing pedophilic nature would have remained an open secret had it not been for two women coming forward with their accounts of what happened in their relationships with him. These women being Robin Bird and Katie Rice. You're now just watching this? I watched this vid when it was new. Man, that's weird that time uh, goes forward. He pursued women all the time. He was always pursuing underage girls. Um, he was always pursuing women who were who worked for him or near him in the studio. Um, you haven't seen everything Katie on the internet, right? The when it comes that out, he was the most dogged about. He just, you know, he we were like the ones that got away, and he just <laughs> would not let it go for the longest time. In 1994, 13-year-old Robin Bird sent Chris Velucci a video of herself talking about her dreams of working in animation. Being a huge fan of Ren and Stimpy, she was ecstatic when he responded, offering oh, his help God. in reaching her dream job and improving her drawing skills. Dude, fucking Hollywood, man. I, Los like, Angeles oh, to show her his animation they're all, studio. they're all pedophiles and During predators. During this trip, dude. he would sexually assault her. Before her senior year of high school, she flew out once more to be his intern and his 16-year-old girlfriend. This became well-known around the industry and was outright stated by his attorney in the response to the allegations. After she graduated, she was hired to work full-time in the studio. Whenever our producer, Tony Mora, first started his internship at Spumco, he asked himself, who's that little girl, when he would see Bird around the office. And as wrong as it was, the relationship between Bird and Chris Felucci seemed to be accepted around the studio. Or rather, people just simply look the other way. Chris Velucci created an atmosphere at Spumco where taking offense to him having a 16-year-old girlfriend Please never, ever, ever say, Go get your gooey little dick wet. Ne- why? I know, I know you're saying it's awful and it's bad they did it. All he wanted to get his gooey little dick wet. Why did you even type that? Oh my god. That's like the worst thing I've ever read in my life. Gooey little... Oh my god. Friend was, in and of itself, offensive. No one, I, I mean, I briefly broke up with him for like four months during that time. Um, but it wasn't because of that even. It was just oh. tired of his shit like as a human being. <laughs> but it wasn't like I realized that it was wrong. I mean, it was just so normalized by everyone who was around me. He, his friends, some of his pervy friends are just such enablers. And they're <laughs> into little girls too. And they just made it seem That's how, dude, that's how it fucking is in Hollywood, dude. They think like the reason no one ever comes out about it is because 
in the kid's eyes, it's normal. In the kid's eyes, this is just how it is. That's why it took so long for anyone to start coming out about shit like this. It's not just Hollywood. I'm using Hollywood as a basic reference to anyone who is rich and in power. I'm using Hollywood as a basic generic reference to all uh, a rich people who have power and control. That's just a basic word to identify many things. Hollywood isn't, I'm not just pointing a finger at the direct location of Hollywood. I'm speaking of that as a whole, as rich people. Normal. It just made it seem like, oh, it's John and his little girlfriend. They're all pervy and um, they were, you know, his enablers. They, especially would, you know, convince me to stay with him and <clears throat> like try to be my friend so that I felt better about the whole situation. Chris Velusi had accumulated a stack of Polaroids over the years of himself and Bird having sex, which oh he would frequently God. show to other people. When told about this years later, everyone's just okay with it, dude. Hey, bro, bro, you look, 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 uh, uh, uh. What? What? How did anyone think, wow, this guy's fucking weird? <laughs> even if it was regular sex, even if it was like sex that was con like consensual and not like predatory. If it was just, say I just took a Polaroid, me and my wife having sex and walk up to my friends. Hey, <laughs> look at this. I'm having sex with my wife. <laughs> look, see that? That's my asshole. You, what do you think of that? In any sense, that's weird. <laughs> hey, hey, co-worker, check this out. It's me pounding my wife. See that? Yeah, she got a strap on. Yeah. I'm getting penetrated. <laughs> like that? Yeah. What the fuck? Bird was completely unaware that he had taken photos of them. The stuff that that we found out about him having um, nude photos and showing them to people was like, you know, I was already his girlfriend. He had already started, you know, having sex with me since I was underage. And then I find out through the course of this investigation that he's al he's also got like pornographic images of me that I didn't even know existed and he's sharing them with people at the studio. So not only will he rape a person, but he will like, you know, take pictures of them naked without their knowledge and <laughs> distribute them to his employees, basically. Um, and all of the guys who saw this were horrified. They were like, why are you showing me this? Like, because I was like little, you know? And not only was I a kid, but like I looked even younger than I was. It was like as if he was like showing naked pictures of a 12 year old or something. So they were all like, what, gross, like, <laughs> don't, why, don't show me this. Um, and yeah, I didn't even learn about that until we, Dear until God. I talked to, um, you know, the guys that I used to work with. They had never told me about it back then, but they came forward now and talked to the reporter about it. So just no one said anything. She reported that her life had become suspended since she was 14 wow. after being wrapped up in Chris Felucci's affairs. Bird left Chris Felucci for good in 2002. <laughs> After which, he sought out another young woman to seemingly replace her. Katie Rice wrote to John Chris Felucci when she was 14, expressing her interest to work in animation someday. The two began chatting on AOL, where John praised her talents, saying she had real potential. The conversations quickly turned sexual on Chris Felucci's part. The then 41-year-old asked her if he ever made her tingle among other sexual stuff. Over the phone, he requested that she say explicit things while he masturbated on the other line. She refused. In 1997, Chris Velucci abruptly stopped talking to her, lining up to when he had just gone together with Bird. Eventually, Rice began working at Spumco, and right as Bird had left Chris Velucci, he began focusing all of his attention on her. 
pressuring her to get involved with him romantically. Chris Felucci would tell her that he was jealous of the boy she liked back in high school. Eventually, she... 40-year-old man. I'm jealous of that teenage boy that you're talking to. ...began working in his home office, where the sexual <clears throat> harassment got worse and worse. He would wait for her in his living room completely naked, walk around with his dick hanging out, and even tell her friends that he would rape her someday. Rice's reasoning for not leaving sooner was that she had suffered from low self-esteem, and Chris Felucci preyed upon her at a very formative age. That's he had how told it her happens. That she was That's special, grooming. Which really affected her. She ended up leaving his production company after two incidents that happened relatively close to each other. The first being Chris Felucci's rape comment, which his attorney states was a joke, and the discovery of child porn what? on his computer. A joke? A joke? Hi. Hey, this is Katie Rice. She is one of the young artists I was telling you about who sought me out because she grew up watching Ren and Stimpy, right? Mm hmm So, um... Ren and Stimpy has a lot of uh, specialists. I hate this. Like we have people who draw manly. We have people who draw uh, sensitive. We have people who draw sexy girls. Katie is the princess of sexy girl artists. Now, I got to tell you a little history because um, all through the 80s, when I was working at Hanna-Barbera and Filmation and all these uh, studios, I always wanted to draw sexy girls into the cartoons. But... Since the networks were all run by uh, why is this? By dykes, why are you talking? They what? You because they thought it was offensive to women to draw girls cute like Katie here. So um, it frustrated me and all the other artists that like to draw sexy girls. What is going on? on Who March is he talking to? 2018, Robin Bird and Katie Rice came forward with their stories, which were published by BuzzFeed News. This is literally like like uh, hentai artist drawing lolly art. And defending it. It's literally the same shit. Bringing John Chris Felucci's crimes into the spotlight. The animation industry's open secret was no longer a secret. Upon the publication of the story, Cartoon Network and Adult Swim both said that they were not aware of any sexual harassment claims against Chris Felucci, but did not plan to work with him again in the future. Nickelodeon declined the comment, but removed Chris Felucci's portrait from the wall of creators the very next day. The same was done with Dan Schneider. Colleagues of Chris Felucci, such as Tony Mora and Gabe Swar, were regretful upon being interviewed. While they had mixed feelings about the artists, they wished they had done more during the events, as they were aware of the misconduct at play. Bird and Rice, Please, however, Lolly Hentai doesn't involve actual children. Don't, 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 don't defend Lolly stuff, please. Don't do that. Or have zero. Yeah, you're, you're, wa you're, you're walking Lucy. a fine line if, if you're defending lolly well, stuff. He ruined a good bit of my childhood and my early adulthood, gave me PTSD, and forced me to change careers, putting my life 10 years or more behind. He is an abuser in the way that he will pull you into a relationship with him and tell you who to be and what he wants from you. Everybody needs to know about it. In a similar vein, Rice said, I became a better artist by working for him. I'm not grateful for it. I wish I hadn't. I wish I were a worse artist now and I didn't have all this bullshit to deal with. Following the publication, Chris Felucci came forward with an 11-page public apology. An apology which he was advised not to publish. And for good reason. In this apology, Chris Felucci denies some parts of the publication, <clears throat> saying that there are general truths in there, <laughs> but they are greatly exaggerated. He then spent six pages detailing the good times that he had with Bird and Rice, and then attempting to deflect blame by saying he was recently diagnosed with bipolar disorder and ADHD. Oh, using that as an excuse. wow. Passing off predatory things with fucking some sort of mental disorder. Man, that sounds familiar. Fuck me. It's almost like we've seen this before excuse for why he was unable to keep his impulses in check. He then laments that his new studio and series won't be able to happen because of the articles being published. Obviously, there was a backlash, almost immediately, with Bird calling it a non-apology and a big pile of manipulative crap. She then followed up on Twitter with a detailing of a traumatic experience she had at the age of 18 
where she had an abortion while carrying Chris Felucci's child. His apology also triggered a backlash from those actually suffering with bipolar disorder and ADHD, stating that his comments perpetuated the stigma that those with mental illnesses are dangerous with uncontrollable urges. He was also blasted for using birds. Yeah, ADHD, bro. <laughs> Everyone who has ADHD has uncontrollable urges to take pictures of underage girls and, uh, and groom underage girls. Thank you for the 100 bits, Space the First. <clears throat> I don't know, man. Rice's artwork in his of course. time section. Do you think that, like, this, this pedophilia thing, is, is that, like, a serious problem in the entertainment industry? Is that... I think it's an animator yes! problem. Yes! I don't know what it is. Um, maybe because they love cartoons, you know? They're, like, eternally childish. And, like... Oh, man! Fast forward, like, a bunch of years to today... You know? You know? <laughs> how, how the internet is now? She called it, dude. The pursuits are seen as good. I, I can't really explain it, but it, because all of the women that I've been hearing about coming out in other industries, you know, they've been adults. Like, they may be too young for the guy to be hitting on, but they're like, you know, in their 20s or something. But this is like, you know, John Kay constantly talks to 13 and 14 year olds on online. And um, that Dan Schneider guy, like he works with like 14 year old girls on TV shows and like obsesses over their feet. Like what the hell is going on? Yep. And that's the story of the fall of John Chris Lucy. Nowadays, he continues to do personal art on his blog, but has not worked on any official animated production in any studio since the Wait, I like cartoons still. Oh, yes. Just, just because uh, some, yeah, just hate all cartoons now. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribe? I'll thank you either way. You know I will miss you.